What's the story with non-caloric sweeteners? Are they helpful for weight loss or are they potentially harmful for weight loss? And what does the evidence say most importantly? What conclusions can we get from all this? Well, it's kind of confusing depending on the type of study, but now we have a new meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So really the highest level of evidence that suggests non-caloric sweeteners on average are helpful for people trying to lose weight. Now, does that apply to everybody? Not necessarily. Let's talk about the details. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. The study is called Association of Low and No Calorie Sweetened Beverages as a Replacement for Sugar Sweetened Beverages with Body Weight and Cardiometabolic Risk, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, and it was published in JAMA Network Open in March of 2022. Now, one reason why it's confusing what role um, non-sweetened, uh, sorry, non-calorie sweeteners um, what role those play is confusing because when you look at observational data, uh, a lot of the studies will suggest that intake of non-caloric sweeteners is associated with higher BMI or higher risk of diabetes. But again, that's association, not causative. And you can really try and back it up logically and say, well, people who are trying to lose weight and are obese and have two, type 2 diabetes are probably counseled to get off the sweetened beverages, the sugar-sweetened beverages, and instead do use non-caloric sweeteners. So that's a perfectly reasonable um, analysis of that observational data, but you don't know one way or the other. That's the weakness of the observational data. So this study looks specifically at randomized controlled trials, so much higher level. Um, it has nothing to do with people choosing it. They were randomized to either sugar-sweetened beverages or not. And what did they find? Well, they included 17 randomized controlled trials uh, with over 1,700 adults. And on average, substituting the non-caloric sweetened beverages for the sugar-sweetened beverages was associated with a reduced body weight of about one kilogram. Okay, so not a huge difference, but it was associated with a reduction in weight, but also a small reduction in uh, body fat and intra- uh, liver fat, hepatic fat. And there wasn't much of an association found with substituting water, interestingly. So again, it, it's a little bit confusing. And here's the thing, you know, studies like this, especially a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials, is going to tell you what happens on average. And there's the bell curve. Now, here's what's not really picked up in this type of a study is the, the personal experience. Because I think clinical experience and some evidence clearly shows that some people are influenced more by sweet tastes than others. And that's one of the slippery slope things about the non-caloric sweeteners. Any sweetener for some people is going to just hit the spot and they're going to be fine. They're going to scratch their itch for their sweetener, so to speak. Um, they're going to enjoy it and they're going to move on. Some people, it's going to light up their dopamine center and their brain's going to want more. How do you predict which one you are? I don't know that there's any way to predict it except based on your own personal history and based on your own personal experience. So this is one of those things where you need to know yourself. You need to know your own response and reaction. But I think we can say in general, having a non-caloric sweetener is certainly better than having a sugar sweetener when it comes to weight loss and metabolic health. Obviously, there's other concerns about chemicals and um, you know processed fake, you can call it fake, um, industrialized products that you're drinking, cancer risk, all those things have been brought up before, um, and there really isn't a definitive conclusion on that. So that's where I would advise just avoiding it altogether. But for some people that doesn't work too, right? Some people really want, they don't like their either unsweetened iced tea or their just their water. They want something that to really kind of hit that itch. So if you're the type of person who can do that and not be triggered to want more and not increase your cravings, um, and especially if it's a non-caloric, that's the key. The other part is when you combine sweeteners with foods that have calories in them, you're likely going to be um, enticed to eat more and more. So this is where the practical aspect of counseling individuals combines with the research aspect. And also, you know, losing one kilogram, not all that dramatic when it comes to this type of a study. So how should you interpret this? Well, Again, I think it comes down to personal experience. There's For weight loss and metabolic health, there's nothing wrong with a non-caloric sweetener at all, as long as you're not triggered by it, increase your cravings by it. If you are, then you should avoid those as strongly as you would avoid any sugar or high fructose corn syrup, because it's not so much about what that one sip or that one drink does to you. It's about the, the cravings and the triggers for everything that follows after that. So so know yourself, You know, know how you respond. That's a very important part of being on your own health journey. We can give you as much general guidance as we can, but part of it comes down to knowing how you react to different things individually. Now, the last part to mention, are all sweeteners the same? No, they definitely aren't. And we have a whole educational evidence-based guide at dietdoctor.com 
about sweeteners, uh, about non-caloric sweeteners. And, you know, erythritol and allulose and monk fruit, um, these are definitely some of the, the better ones. And there are others that, that do sort of uh, trigger glucose and insulin rises uh, more than others. So take a look at that guide for all the information. You'll see why we recommend against some sweeteners like maltitol because that can um, increase blood sugar and insulin responses and how xylitol isn't really no calorie, no sugar, but sort of low calorie, low carb and how you have to be really careful with that if you have any pets. So we go into all those details in our guide. So overall, I hope this was helpful. You know, I, I, I talk a lot about sort of underwhelming studies um, on these on these videos because they do get a lot of media attention. And I think it's important for us to realize that maybe a lot of them aren't that dramatic, but they bring up a broader concept and a more important topic for each individual. And that's what I like to explore to help you understand how maybe this uh, uninspiring study can really open our eyes to what we should be paying attention to and what could help us on our own uh, health journeys. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. If this was helpful, please click the thumbs up and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.